In this video, I'd like to talk about the sine and cosine identities involving periodicity. And we have the unit circle here, where the radius of this circle we know is equal to 1. And on the unit circle, we have the xy coordinate along some point on the circle, and we know that the x coordinate is the cosine of this angle theta measured positively from the x axis if we go counterclockwise and negatively if we go clockwise. And the y value is the sine of the angle theta. And what we want to consider with this periodicity is what happens if we add pi over 2 to this angle. And remember that we can essentially construct a right triangle here where we have a vertical length that is perpendicular to the x-axis. Let me redraw that. And we have this horizontal length parallel to the x-axis. And we know that this vertical length, this is the y value, the sine of the angle, and the horizontal is the x value or the cosine of the angle. Now, Again, we want to ask the question, what happens when we take theta and we add pi over 2 to this? What happens to our trig functions? If we put in cosine of theta plus pi over 2 or sine of theta plus pi over 2, how do they relate to the original trig functions in this first quadrant? And this angle of theta plus pi over 2, we need to consider where that is on this unit circle. And what we can realize is that it would be right about here or so on the unit circle since we are taking pi over 2 radians, which again is a 90 degree angle. So that will bring us to the positive y axis. And from there, we will need to add theta to that, which will put us right about here. So let me draw in that ray which again goes to about that point right there. And this angle right here is theta plus pi over 2. Since pi over 2 is 90 degrees, so that brings us to here. And then this angle here, what's left, this would be theta. And we can construct a right triangle here where we draw a line parallel to the x-axis that goes to the y-axis and a line that's perpendicular to the x-axis that goes all the way down to the origin. And we've essentially taken this triangle here and just rotated it 90 degrees. Since it has the same angle and the same hypotenuse, so it must have the same length here as it did here. This would be the sine of theta, and this vertical component in our new shifted triangle, this would be the cosine of theta. But notice that the cosine of theta in this triangle, this is the y value of this point, and the sine of theta in this triangle is the x value in the point. But we can also look at this point its xy coordinate as we normally do where the x value is the cosine of the original angle measured from the positive x axis and that angle was theta plus pi over 2 and the y value is the sine of that angle theta plus pi over 2 and we can compare the the y value that we get from this triangle we constructed to the y value at this coordinate point. Namely, this y value is the cosine of theta. And the x value, well, it's the sine of theta, but it's actually the opposite. Since notice that the x value here is negative. So this is equal to the negative of the sine of theta. This length here, this sine of theta in our triangle, this is just the magnitude or the length of this line but the negative tells us the direction, and we know that on the left half of the coordinate plane, x values are negative. So we can rewrite these a little bit more clearly. 
that the cosine of theta is equal to the sine of theta plus pi over 2. And the negative or opposite of the sine of theta, this is equal to the cosine of theta plus pi over 2. And this top identity here, we can essentially interpret it that if we shift the sine function pi over 2 radians, then that's equal to the cosine function. And we'll see this when we look at the graphs of these. In fact, if we graph the sine function, it looks something like this. This is not drawn to scale. And when we shift it pi over 2 radians, by adding it, we'll be shifting left pi over 2 radians. We will get a function that looks something like that. And that function, again, this is not drawn very well, that function would be the cosine function if we had just graphed that by itself. So in essence, the sine and the cosine function are the same function just shifted relative to each other by pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees. And for this bottom identity here, if we shift the cosine function, essentially move it left pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees, then that's equal to the opposite of the sine function. Essentially, the sine function, again, looks something like this, but now we will take its opposite, we will reflect it across that x-axis. And this right here is the cosine function, just shifted left pi over 2 radians.